All right, so here are the notes for the second uh, lesson uh, reviewing solving equations. And again, the idea is finding the value of a missing variable. And the key idea is finding that value by applying inverse operations to both sides of the equation at some point, probably multiple times, in order to finally get down to just what that variable is. So let's look at the first one. A minus 2 over 5 equals negative 3. For this thing, uh, if I'm tempted to add 2 to both sides, that won't probably do me any good because uh, that subtraction by 2 you see there is all being divided by 5. So, you know, it's not inherently wrong to add 2 to both sides unless you think it's going to cancel out that takeaway 2 because that is wrong. It's not a takeaway 2, it's a takeaway 2 all divided by 5. So I want to first get rid of that division by 5, which again is easy to do if I just multiply both sides by 5. Right? Everything in the numerator here, a minus 2 was being divided by 5, it's now also being times by 5. So therefore, these two cancel out. So all I need to have here is just a minus 2. On the right-hand side, I have negative 15. Now my equation is equivalent and so much simpler, I think, to what I had before. Just add 2 to both sides. And so a equals negative 13. All right, so I still did actually add 2 at, at some point. But if I just did it right away and assumed it would cancel out that takeaway 2 in the first step without doing anything to that divi division by 5, that would be my mistake. Okay? But a equals negative 13. So for the equation on the right, this one right here, where I want to figure out b, I have many options. The first thing I want to do is distribute the 2.5. Because on the right-hand side, I see 2.5 times b minus 5.4. b subtract 5.4 is all being multiplied by 2.5. So personally, I'm just going to distribute that part before I start multiplying or adding or something to both sides of the equation. So, so far, that what I have on the right, um, I can leave as it is. However, because the, r sorry, on the left, I could leave it as is, as a fraction. However, because what I see on the right is in decimal form, I'm going to put everything in decimal form. And so 9 over 5, if you decimalize it, if you go 9 divided by 5, it's 1.8. So I'm going to write this as 1.8 equals, and then I'll distribute the right-hand side. 2.5 times b is 2.5b minus 5.4 times 2.5. I definitely use a calculator for that. And you get 13.5. Excuse my messy writing here. All right, so now I have an equation with decimals, but it's really just quite straightforward. It's the only difference compared to this and what I did in the previous lesson is I have some decimals here. So I'm going to cancel out the 13.5 by adding 13.5 to both sides. And so on the right-hand side, 1.8 plus 13.5 is 15.3. And on the, sorry, on the left-hand side, the right-hand side, all I have left is 2.5b. And again, that means 2.5 times b. And to cancel out multiplication by 2.5, we divide both sides by 2.5. And so really all I have left is b on the right-hand side, which I'm trying to figure out and whatever 15.3 divided by 2.5 is. If I leave it like that, if I leave it like this, that's not in lowest terms. A fraction is never in lowest terms if there's a decimal in it. Um, so like I said, since I decimalize everything else, I might as well decimalize this, and you get 6.12. And that's b. So in this case, I used a distributive property before I started multiplying or adding something to both sides. Um, and again, you always have choices. OK. And so. Just two more again, a bit more complex. C and D here. So let's look at C first. Uh, like before, I want to just use a distributive property first. So on the left hand side, instead of 3 times C plus 8, I'm going to multiply the 3 to both those. Because again, that C plus 8 in the brackets is all being multiplied by 3. So when I distribute the 3, I get 3C plus 24. Okay, now at this point, I have lots of choices. What, one thing I really want to notice is that I have the variable c on both sides of the equation. I want to, at some point, I have to take care of that. I want to take care of that right now. And the way I take care of it is I cancel out one of those. So if I want to cancel out this term, I want to subtract 3c from both sides. If I want to cancel out this term, I want to add 3c to both sides. It's the opposite of what you see there. It doesn't really matter what I pick. Generally, I mean, the most important thing is it doesn't matter. I can pick one. Generally, I like to cancel out the smaller of the two. In this case, minus 3 is smaller than positive 3. So I want to cancel out this value right here. I want to cancel out that entire term. I want to get rid of the entire term of minus 3c. And the way I can do that is to add 3c to both sides. So I'm going to add 3c 
to the right side and, of course, to the left side. If I don't do it equally to both sides, my equation is no longer balanced, which means the work I have is no longer correct. And so on the right-hand side, those just cancel out. And it's, pretty, it's really easy to get rid of an entire term if you just add or subtract whatever the opposite to that term is. So all I've left on the right-hand side is negative 2. Uh, on the left-hand side, 3c plus 3c is 6c. So I have 6c and then plus 24. And now it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides. And so I have just 6c on the left-hand side. And negative 2 take away 24 is negative 26. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And then I will have my value of c completely isolated. And so c equals negative, I could say negative 26 over 6. Um, you know, 26 is not a multiple of 6, so it's not a whole number. That said, I don't want to leave it like this, because this is not in lowest terms. So while it's not wrong, I'm not done. Uh, if I just divide the numerator and the denominator by 2, I get negative 13 over 3. That is considered to be a bit better. That is in lowest terms as an improper fraction. If you decimalize it, you get negative 4.3 repeating. And again, I'm fine with you decimalizing it, as long as you also understand the fraction. I just don't think the decimal's better. Um, you know, th we were done with negative 13 over 3. Negative 26 over 6, again, wasn't wrong, just, just not in lowest terms. Okay, so one of these two are the two we should have. And so the last one. And again, all this is a review of up to grade 9 equations. And you did some pretty tough stuff, actually, in grade 9 with solving equations. Um, Things like this tend to throw off a lot of students. We have variables on both sides, plus they're both being divided by different numbers. And so the idea is I want to cancel out that divided by 4, and I want to cancel out the divided by 6. Um, how do I do that? Well, the opposite of division is multiplication. So I want to multiply both sides by some number. Now, if I multi let's say I multiply everything by 4. Let's say I multiply both sides entirely by 4. Yes, these would cancel out. Over here. We have 4 times d over 6 minus 2. If I distribute the 4, um, which is what I really should do, the whole side's being multiplied by 4, nothing will cancel out here. Um, you know, d divided by 6 times 4, nothing's going to cancel out there. So multiplying both sides by 4 in itself is not wrong, but it doesn't do everything I want. Same idea is if I multiply everything by 6. If I multiply everything by 6, Right, multiply everything here by 6. When I distribute the 6 out on the right-hand side, that part will cancel out, but it, nothing will cancel out over here. Again, multiplying by 6 and dividing by 4 don't cancel out. So how can I do this? Well, I could do it in two steps. I could multiply both sides by 4, and then I could multiply both sides by 6. And that will work. Or what I can do is just look at my denominators, 4 and 6, and think, what is the lowest common denominator of 4 and 6? What is the LCD? of 4 and 6. What's the smallest number that's in both the 4 times tables and the 6 times tables? Well, that number, this lowest one is 12. 12 is the smallest number that both multiply, that both have 4 and 6 multiplying into it. So if I multiply both sides by 12, this will always be the fastest way of doing it. It's a really important idea that if you ever have a fraction you don't want in an equation you're trying to solve, you can always cancel it out by just multiplying both sides by the denominator, and if there's multiple denominators, then by the lowest common denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. And so if I do that, uh, let me just kind of show it like this. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. So this side by 12, and this whole side here times 12. So when I distribute the left-hand side, I have 12 times d over 4. It's not wrong to write that as 12 times d over 4. Um, remember, when you're multiplying with fractions, top times the top, bottom times the bottom. Right, that's one way of explaining it. But 12 over 4 reduces. 12 over 4 is the same as 3 whole. So really, all I have is 3d on the left-hand side, uh, and which I could see, honestly, right here. I could see, if I highlight this, 12 divided by 4, I can just see right there that's going to simplify down to 3 over 1. Again, there's a whole bunch of ways of approaching it. The, more you the better you understand something, the more options you see. Uh, but in the end, the left-hand side, if I multiply both sides by 12, is simplify down to just 3 times d. On the right-hand side, if I distribute the 12 here, well, 12 times d over 6, or if you want, 12 over, over 1 times d over 6, right? Multiplying fractions, numerators together, denominators together, is 12d over 6. Uh, as well, I have 
12 times negative 2, that's relatively easy, minus 24. But this 12d over 6 again reduces. 12 over 6 is the same as just 2 whole. So perhaps you can skip that step and just get straight to this. 3d equals 2d minus 24. And again, in this, in this step, by multiplying both sides by 12, I really got that first equation right down to this, which is so much simpler. But it did take, you know, um, take a good under, you know, memory of uh, how we work with fractions, especially with multiplying by fractions. Remember, when you're multiplying by fractions, it's generally quite quick. Numerators together, denominators together. But now, with that part done, I can focus on this equation. And I'm going to choose, I have d's on both sides. I'm going to subtract 2d from both sides, and I will actually be done. Because on the left-hand side, 3d take away 2d is just 1d. So I'm trying to figure it out. What is d? And on the right-hand side, all I've left is negative 24. So d is equal to negative 24. Okay. Notice, in just a few problems, I quickly got to some more complex equations. Everything here is from Math 9. Doesn't mean it's easy. It just means we need to remember it. And so we do need some homework for these and expect some of the problems to be a bit more intensive than others. But for this, your homework is from the Math 9 textbook, which, unless you never gave it back, um, you really should have. So you probably, for this, want to check the scan document that's on the Teams page. But it's not from the Math 10 textbook, so it's from Math Links 9. Ooh, that's messy writing. Still getting used to writing with this new Apple Pen. OK, so it's from the Math Links 9 text, which is, again, scanned on online. And from those scanned pages, you want to find the pages I've scanned from pages 237 to 239, these questions. Now, all the homework you see here is also on that document they gave you already. But there's your homework as well. All right? And like I keep saying, even though this is technically review, well, it is review of Math 9, uh, don't assume you remember it well. Uh, you definitely need some practice with this and to check your answers. It all comes down to the idea of applying inverses to both sides. All right, and that's all. Thank you.